Okay, so during this week, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about um, Roman warfare, and particularly during uh, the Roman Empire, when Rome was at the height of its military power. So how do I learn about this? Um, the way that this uh, set of um, videos is done is that it's broken into three parts. Um, it's intended that you should have completed this by the end of the week. So this would be week one, term two. And this can be done at once. So you can do all of it in one go, or you can split it into three separate tasks where each part is done on a different day. And all of the tasks, all of the things that you have to do um, can be found on Connect in the library section. Um, and your teacher should have put that up there for you. So what is the point or what are we trying to learn today or this week? So by the end of this week's topic, you should be able to understand the tactics, equipment, and strategies that made Rome's army powerful. And that's our learning intention, meaning that's what we're learning this week. Now, the success cr criteria is how do we show this? So the first thing is, can you recall Rome's army and give an example of one of their enemies. The second thing you should be able to do by the end of this week is you can recall a legionary's equipment and explain its use. And the third thing is, can you recall the strategies and tactics they used and evaluate its significance? So how important or how useful are these strategies? So that's the introduction. And we're going to be going into part one. So this is the first section for the week. And we're going to be looking at part one, which is the Roman army. Now, what made Rome's army very significant was that it was very, very organized. Rome had a very organized army, which they arranged into legions. And these legions were made up of about 4,500 to 5,000 soldiers. So each legion was quite large. Now, at the height of Rome, they had up to 30 legions. So when Rome was at its largest, at its most powerful, they could have up to 30 legions. As you can see to the right, you can also see here, there's a picture showing a legion and what you would often see is that the legion would be broken down into smaller cohorts, a word which we still use today. And they would also have um, in these cohorts, um, they would have centurions who would look after those men. The centurion of the first cohort, the one right at the front, had doubled the troops, but was also more important than the other centurions. Centurions being the leader or the person in charge of a cohort. Right at the top, we have a legate or a legatus as the person who's in charge of an entire legion. Now, Rome, Roman soldiers had a very high level of discipline. This put them um, very differently to many of the other enemies that they had to face during the Roman Empire. And the reason that this is significant is because they were one of the first armies where being a soldier was a job. Before they had soldiers as a job, a lot of them would have to leave their jobs to fight. So you might be a farmer, you might be a metal worker, you might be a stone worker, and you would have to leave your job to fight in the army. And then your family would have to look after your job or your sons would probably have to help you out at that time while you were gone. Now, Rome changed that by paying their soldiers regularly. So you didn't have to be a farmer. You could fight and training was being paid for. So if when you trained, it was working as a soldier and you would be paid. But this meant that their training 
was very, very serious. They took it seriously. So trained and disciplined soldiers was considered being part of the job. And that also meant that they could live, train, and they could fight together. So they built very, very good strategies in communication because they were being paid professionally. This was their job. They took their training seriously. And they also had to live, work, and train with the people that they were fighting with. Now, why did Rome need a powerful army? It's because Rome had many enemies. So Rome, the Roman Empire, was very, very big. That meant that they had many borders where they had lots and lots of neighbors. Now, that means that Rome would be under attack or have people try and invade and take their land. And it didn't help that Rome was quite aggressive and liked to conquer other lands, which means that they had lots of people who were enemies of Rome, who didn't like Rome. Now, the Romans would call enemies who were not Roman, not Latin speaking, which is the language that they used back then. And they didn't like these people, and they called those people barbarians. So if you were not a Roman, you didn't speak Latin, then you would be considered a barbarian, which meant that you were uncivilized and you were considered um, a bit lower than a, than a Roman person. As you can see here on the right, we have a picture of a Roman legionary, a Roman soldier fighting uh, a Celt, which is one of the enemies near sort of the British area where Rome used to fight. And then that's kind of how they would dress up. So they would consider these people barbarians. Okay, so this is the end of the information for part one. And then it always finishes off with a task. So for your task to revise what you've just gone over is you are going to be completing the enemies of Rome comprehension task, which is on connect. And it talks about the barbarians and the history of the Roman empire and some of the enemies that they had at different points from when Rome was a kingdom, Rome as an Republic, and then eventually Rome as an empire. So what you have to do is you have to read the passage, and then you're going to answer the questions. You're going to read the information, answer the questions. Some of the questions may involve information from different parts of that passage. So for one or two of those questions, you're going to have to read quite carefully and make sure that you understand what you're reading. If you are finding that tricky, then I would suggest using a highlighter to pick out the key words that you don't understand first, and then going onto the internet and just making sure that you Google those words so you know what they mean. Once you finish that, you should have um, Answers will be put up onto Connect so you can double check your work. So that's the end of part one. If you've completed that, fantastic. Um, you can stop here or you can continue moving on. And the next part is going to be part two. So make sure you finish the task first. So task one, make sure you finish that first before we get to part two. I'm going to leave a pause so you know that that's what you have to do. Cool. So hopefully you found the task um, okay. Now for part two, we're going to be looking specifically at the Roman soldier, which we call the legionary. Now, the legionary is a very significant soldier for its time, and we're about to investigate why. So the legionary was the name of a Roman soldier, 
and they were very successful for their time. So if we watch this video here, that's going to provide us with some more information about the Roman soldier. Now, the Romans would train with heavy wooden weapons. And a legionary was very, very disciplined and were expected to follow all orders without question. Now, if that meant that they disobeyed or they didn't have discipline, meaning that they didn't follow orders, they didn't look after their equipment, they didn't keep up with everybody else, then they would suffer severe punishment. Now, these punishments could be okay, like having to do extra guard duty or clean out the toilets, but some guard duties would be very, very harsh. And in some cases, like falling asleep during guard duty, where an enemy could attack, um, could be punishable to, by death. So they were had very, very high expectations on what they needed to do. Now, these heavy woody wooden weapons, as you can see in the picture, were actually designed to be heavier, one and a half to two times as heavy as their normal combat weapons that they would use, the actual weapons. And the reason they did that was so if you did something, an action with something that was very, very heavy, and you did it over and over and over again, eventually, you would find that when you finally got your sword and your shield that was lighter than normal, you're going to find that it's much, much, much easier to be able to do use during battle. So they used to make them use even heavier weapons and shields. So they got used to the weight. Now marching. So back then, of course, in Rome, they didn't have cars, they didn't have buses, they didn't have planes. So legionaries had to actually march from one point to another. Now each legionary had to carry their own weapons, their own armor, and their own camping gear. And they were very, very fit. A legionary was expected to do that. And that meant they were expected to march up to 30 kilometers in a single day, with their weapons, their armor, and their camping gear. So Roman soldiers were no joke. They were very, very fit and had very high expectations on how much physical strength that they had. So that brings us to the end of task two. Now with task two, this task might take a little bit longer and what you need to do is we're going to be having a look at the Roman soldier equipment. So what I want you to do is I want you to complete this worksheet and you can find this uh, in the in Connect. Some information can also be found in this YouTube video, which I've got there. Um, and that can help be very, very helpful too. As you can see on the example to the right, what you need to do is you need to look at the general equipment that a Roman legionnaire used, the weapons that a Roman legionnaire used, and the armor. So you have to label the pieces on this Roman legionnaire. And then what you need to do after that is you need to write a description about what it is and what it was used for. So all the parts of a Roman soldier's equipment was useful. And you need to tell me or you need to do research through these websites on why they were useful. So I'd like you to give that a go. Again, we should see some answers come up as well on to connect. So you can double check your answers, but give it your best go. It should be hopefully fairly straightforward but you can start to see as you learn about the different pieces, you'll start to see what made the Roman 
soldier. Now all the pieces of their equipment um, actually come together to create um, a powerful soldier. So that's the end of task two. Again, you can either stop here and then finish off the task and then have that be the end of the day for Hass, or you can continue on. Okay, this is the last part of the Roman warfare topic, and we're going to be talking about the tactics and strategies that allowed Rome to destroy its enemies and defend its borders. Now, I've spoken in the last part about Roman discipline and how important it was for Roman soldiers to have discipline, meaning that they followed orders uh, absolutely, they'd look after their equipment and their gear, but it also meant that they knew when they were fighting an enemy that they wouldn't panic. They knew they had a job, and that job, if they did it properly, would probably see success for the entire army. So they were trained in special tactics. Tactics are ways that you can beat the opponent by moving your soldiers around the battlefield or picking a way that you want to fight that everyone agrees on. This meant that every single soldier knew what their job was. And these tactics would allow them to beat their enemies even when they were very outnumbered. During the Roman Empire, because of how large the empire was, it was hard to defend the borders. That meant that a lot of legions were stretched very, very thin trying to defend Rome against their neighbors. So sometimes Roman legions would come up against hordes and hordes of what they would say barbarians, which would be people who um, are not Roman and don't speak Latin. And they would fight them and they could be outnumbered one to three and still come out victorious, meaning that they would beat the enemy both in the amount of kills, so the amount of people that they lost, but also in the amount of land that they gained afterwards. So Rome was very, very successful against their enemies because of their tactics. Now, one famous tactic that they used was the testudo strategy. Now, testudo in Latin means tortoise. So just named after the animal with the shell. And the idea was that everyone would lock their shields together to form a shell of shields. So if you were on the outsides, then you would stick your shield right up to defend your side. And you would trust that every person next to you was going to do the same. If you were in the middle and you couldn't put your shield to the side, then you're going to put your shield to the top. This was very, very effective because it provided them defense from arrows and spears and rocks and allowed them to march forward without harm. Now, it's very, very difficult to be able to attack someone if they're throwing things at you and they've got arrows coming at you. It's hard to march up to people who are doing that. So... Instead of trying to attack back, they just went into a full defensive group and they would slowly, together as a group, shuffle forwards. And although it's a bit scary because you can feel all the attacks hitting you, the shields are going to defend you and you can trust the person next to you. That's where the, the discipline comes in. So if one person doesn't do their job properly, the whole thing falls apart. That's why it's one example of Roman discipline and tactics. As you can see here to the right, there's an example. This is a reenactment, meaning these are people who um, look at historical sources and try to recreate these things as close as possible. 
Now, what do Roman tactics normally look like? So when Romans are fighting, normally what they do is they would form lines of shields. And these shields in a line would make a wall. As they got close to the enemy, they would throw the pilum, the spear, which was designed to pierce the enemy shield. But most importantly, the back was heavy, so it would weigh the person's shield down. Now, if you didn't have a shield, that made defending yourself a lot, lot harder. So as their shields got weighed down, if the spear didn't kill them, then the Roman soldiers would march forward in a line. They would push with their shields and they would stab using their swords, which is the gladius, the short sword that they used. This was a very effective strategy. So they would push forward with their shields. They would stab. And if you want to see a video of that strategy, you can click on this link over here and that will take you um, to that example. It's a very, very famous strategy that they used and worked um, very, very well to their advantage. Now, another example of Roman legions is we can see this example of Testudo and Roman marching recreated in a fictional movie called Ben-Hur. So they've recreated this scene because it's set, this movie is set during Roman times. And after a Roman legion marches into a town, an archer tries to kill one of the Roman leaders, and then the army moves into Testudo to defend themselves. So you see the archer fires an arrow, and the instant that they think that they're being attacked by arrows, they form into this tortoise formation. And you can see that done very, very quickly and the discipline of the Roman soldiers. You can also see the discipline of the marching and the way which a lot of them, a lot of the Roman soldiers would have to march in these long lines to get from one location to another. And the, the spectacle of Roman power, how impressive that would have been as all these Romans wearing the same uniform, the same weapons, marched into a town. It's not unsurprising to see just this, the display of Roman power in this um, recreation. So click on this YouTube link there to, to have a look at that clip. It's um, quite an impressive clip. So to finish off Roman tactics, we're going to be doing a source comparison. Now, Hass, and one part of Hass is about observing events of the past and then seeing how they have continued or changed. So this task is going to get you to compare ancient the ancient Roman army and compare them to modern right police and their tactics. So you can find this task on Connect and you can see here what you need to do. So you have to see what, you know, what can we observe in source one and source two? You know, what's the difference bet between them? And then the sources will also be on that document as well. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to see, you know, what ways has the Roman army and the tactics actually influenced and gone further even all the way until the modern times. But also think about, you know, what has changed? Are they used in exactly the same way? Is it, you know, what's going on with what we call the context? So when, what was happening during the time? Now you can find this on Connect. Again, this is a very, very good task for you to practice your skills. Um, Answers again will be put on to connect. And hopefully by the end of you completing that, you should have uh, a pretty interesting idea of how effective some of the strategies were. So that's the end of part three. I'd like you to work on the task. Just before we do that though, we're just gonna double back and just make sure have we, by the end of this week, done these things? 
Have we understood the tactics, equipment, and strategies that made Rome's army powerful? Hopefully you have. After looking at part one, Rome's army, part two, the Roman legionary, and part three, Roman tactics. And then hopefully you've completed the tasks and you can say how you've shown how you know this. You can recall Rome's army and give an example of one of their enemies. Hopefully you can recall a legionary's equipment and explain its use. And hopefully you can recall the strategies and tactics they used and evaluate its significance, say why it's important or how it's impact, how it's been impactful for people further down towards more recent history. So hopefully you found this very, very useful into the topic of Roman warfare. If you have any things that you don't understand or you're not sure about, you can always go back to the PowerPoint. You can always have a look and you can always send an email um, to either myself or Mr. Atkins, depending on who your teacher is, and we can definitely give you a hand. So hopefully you are giving this a good go. Fantastic that you've uh, sat down to, to try this out and hope you have a great week.